Hello, everyone. I'm Masi Del Pei. Welcome to our Earth Day celebration. Usually, April 22 every year is a commemoration of the first Earth Day, April 22, 1970, which has been inaugurated by the insight of uh, its founder, uh, Gaylord Nelson, a senator of Wisconsin. And this uh, new age thinking and uh, I would say a new environmental movement uh, path has been initiated as part of the hippie movement and sentiments against war and environmental pollution. So today we will celebrate Earth Day through my lecture, which includes a lot of the exoteric component of the Earth. We will talk a little bit about what really the Earth is and what the Earth is made of, and also the esoteric Earth, which is the planet Earth as a living organism. So the title of my talk today is Collaborating with and Healing the Earth as a Living Organism or a Living Being. Today, more than ever, a lot of people are now shouting uh, against uh, you know, greenhouse effects that cause increased temperature from 2 degrees to 11 degrees uh, by 2100, as predicted. And also, a lot of people are concerned about soil pollution with chemicals and pathogens passed to human beings through food and water, and therefore causing a lot of malnutrition and toxicity. We have also 1.2 billion people who lack clean water, causing 5 million deaths a year, especially children. And we have also an average of 2 million people who die every year due to air pollution and sickness due to uh, toxicity. Today, people are concerned about the atmosphere filled with uh, carbon, and it has the highest carbon uh, measurement in the last 800 years, 800,000 years. And of course, global warming most likely would affect the rise in sea levels, the expansion of deserts, the species extinctions. We have also a threat to food and security and loss of habitats. That's why we have uh, many solutions saving our rainforest. And what our executives today are proposing are to reduce uh, and reuse recycles and also uh, to save many things that we use usually and throw out, especially in the United States, but put them into a recycling bin and separate things that are organic and not organic or plastics and bottles and so forth. Now, some business proposals uh, would focus on uh, avoiding uh, carbon pollution by using uh, high-efficiency cars and machines that uses uh, carbon fuel. Also, to reduce wastes and make things efficient. And also to uh, have a cleaner energy production. And of course, to uh, preserve our rainforests and uh, our trees so that we have a breathing mechanism by which more oxygen saturation in the air can be achieved. But is this global warming really a, a problem or is it a symptom where the Earth is changing? Now, before we can talk more about the whole Earth Care project, I'd like to focus even in summarizing what is really the Earth and who is the Earth? So, uh, I would like to say that the Earth is one of uh, the uh, planets that we call uh, terrestrial planets in the solar system. It's the biggest terrestrial planet, which is made up of rock formation. We have also Venus, we have Mars and Mercury, who are terrestrial planets. Whereas Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus and the other planets are gas planets. And we have also two dwarf planets. Well, they just demoted Pluto. So Pluto is now considered a dwarf planet, so with Ceres. So there are many other things that are coming out through science, but today, as far as we are concerned, uh, the Earth is, uh, I would say, a planet that is sometimes called the blue marble by astronauts. Or we call, them, we call the Earth also water world because the Earth is composed of two-thirds uh, made of ocean, two-thirds covered by ocean. And 
Let's talk also about the Earth and its activity. The Earth also rotates around the Sun at around, uh, I think, 1,532 feet per second, or I would say 100 or 1,000 miles per hour at the equator. And the planet revolves around the Sun around 18 miles per second, or we call it 365.24 days a year or 365, 366 days a year. And uh, the Earth rotates on its axis, not exactly 24 hours a day, but uh, 23 hours and 56 uh, minutes. I think through the tsunami effects, uh, it has tilted, it has changed the uh, axis tilt, so it's probably even shorter. Now, I'd like to talk also about the Earth as a living activity uh, that coexists with other uh, planets. So l let's talk also about the Earth made up of human beings and uh, speaking different languages and uh, practicing different religions. So as of today, we have, uh, I think, 7.075 billion human beings that are registered uh, born and alive. And, and so that is like the survey that is of 2000, I think, 2000. 10 or 11. Uh, I don't recall exactly the date, but uh, we are almost 7.075 billion human beings. And uh, I will probably talk this later on, but we have almost 100, I would say, 106 billion human beings born since 5000 BC. So we, we can uh, summarize that later on, but what I'm concerned today is to explain that the Earth uh, has a life force that is invisible. The Earth is not just this physical rock formation, but it is made of an invisible Earth. So our collaboration with intelligence and the divine plan of the Earth needs a little bit explanation so that we will not focus on what the scientists say about the Earth, but also on its uh, energetic content, its consciousness, and other living organisms that are not even visible. All right, so let, let's talk about uh, what we call the different religions on Earth. Religions on Earth, we have 2.2 uh, billion approximately Christian, Christians, and maybe around, uh, uh, there are more Muslims than Catholic Christians though, but for the whole Christian uh, community around the world is 2.2 billion uh, Christians. And Islam is 1.65 billion. And we have also the no religion, so-called atheists, or they belong to paganism and other things, uh, 1.1 billion. We have also Hinduism as uh, 1 billion approximately. And we have Buddhism, which is around 500,000, uh, uh, 500 million. And the rest are Chinese uh, folklore, uh, folk, uh, folk religions, and uh, Shintoism, and we have also Sikhism, Judaism, and also Jainism. Those are like the top ten religions. And also we have uh, the population that are the top ten on Earth today. As China has around 1.347 billion people as of uh, the survey of 2011. And we have India, which is populated with 1.2 to 1.21 billion uh, in 2011 survey. Well, whereas the United States have uh, 313 point uh, around 88 or 882 million Americans, uh, 313, 882 million Americans survey of 2012. And the uh, fourth largest population on Earth today is Indonesia with uh, 237.64 um, um, million people. 237.64 million uh, Indonesians in that survey of 2010. And the rest of the world uh, ranks of, uh, from number five is Brazil. We have Pakistan. We have uh, Nigeria. Of Africa, we have Russia, we have Bangladesh, and Japan as the top 10 populated uh, countries. Whereas in terms of uh, 
uh, languages. Let's talk about also human languages. We have uh, the most uh, Mandarin speaking uh, human beings with around 845 a million people, uh, Mandarin-speaking humans. And we have also Spanish-speaking, 329 million Spanish-speaking people. So Spanish and Latin uh, American. And we have also English-speaking, which is uh, 328 million. 328 million. And also uh, Hindu-Urdu, about 240 million uh, Hindu-Urdu-speaking uh, people. And the rest are Arabic, which is around 206 million. And the rest are Bengali and uh, Portuguese. We have Russian, Japanese, and uh, Punjabi of Indian origin. Those are the top 10 languages. Whereas uh, today, uh, we, we can say that uh, in terms of uh, kingdoms, we have many species and kingdoms. We have the animal kingdom is 7.7 million species as of... Uh, the survey in 2011. And we have uh, uh, fungi, 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 fungus. We have 0.3 million. I, say, I think it's uh, 0.61 million, by the way. So those of the fungus family, 0.61 million. And plants are 0.3 million only. Uh, species, protozoa, for example, is 0.04 million. And uh, chromistas, chromista is 0 0.03 million. These are the algae group. Well, bacteria alone is about what they call five nonillion. You know what's nonillion? It's uh, 10 to the 30. 10 to the 30, uh, uh, it's, if you say five nonillion is five times 10 to the 30. So that's a lot. And uh, the types of bacteria are around 10 to, uh, I would say, 1 billion kinds. And in terms of viruses, uh, there are several millions of viruses, and only 5,000 species or kinds are still studied. So uh, if, if I explain the Earth, the, there's so much uh, con constitution of the Earth that I'd like to, uh, you know, to touch upon. But uh, today our topic is not focused on just the Earth itself. I would like to talk about the Earth as an organism that is composed of many hierarchies. By the way, do you know that the Earth has uh, what we call a shape that is uh, geoid, geoid, G-E-O-I-D. Geoid is what they describe the Earth's shape, which is uh, an ellipsoid. It's almost an oblong whose uh, circumference is around, uh, at the equator, around, uh, I think, 24,901 miles, or 40,075 kilometers uh, circumference. And from pole to pole, it's a little shorter, which is around 24,859 uh, miles, or around 40,000 uh, kilometers, approximately. And the diameter of the Earth has a nominal size of uh, 8,000 miles, or around 13,000 kilometers, the diameter. And the largest, the largest uh, I would say, deviation is caused by the Mount Everest, because it's the highest peak, which is around 29,000 uh, 29, feet, approximately, or 18,850 kilometers, or miles. And uh, the Mariana Trench is the deepest part of the ocean, which is around 35,747 um, kilometer uh, feet, I would say feet, which is uh, around 10,911 kilometers. So that is like the deepest part of the ocean and the tallest mountain on Earth. But if you look at the biggest protrusion, like the bulge is in the equator with the Mount Chimborazo, of Ecuador and the Mount uh, Huascaran of Peru, because of course the equator is the biggest part of the oblong or the ellipsoid, and so those uh, volcanoes in Ecuador and Peru are the, the biggest uh, protrusional bulge. Anyway, we don't have to take, uh, talk about all of these uh, things, uh, because these are data you can find from Wikipedia 
or from uh, WHO or from United Nations or even NASA. But uh, I'd, I'd like to touch, because you see, when I talk of humanity and species, we need to be talking about uh, some current numbers, and we need to touch them so that we have a little bit of more ideas of uh, when I talk about the bigger picture. For example, as I said, uh, today, as of the statistics of scientists, there are 106 billion humans that were born from 5,000 years BC, and this is like 6% 6 of our, uh, our current population is only 6% of that total uh, incarnations of human beings. And today we have also uh, 193 countries, if you were talking of uh, the register from the United Nations. So 193 countries, or as far as the World Atlas is concerned, we have 196 uh, countries. Now, the United States have registered only 195, because they don't consider other countries as, as sovereign states. So sovereign states usually are those that are more independent and have, uh, uh, I would say, world-recognized governance. 190 of them and around 17 that are still not recognized or disputed sovereignties. Around 207 countries. All right, now the topic today is focused on collaborating with and healing the earth as a living being. And I'd like to make some postulates and assumptions, or at least a principle laws behind them, so that it will strengthen my position today that will give to you the whole earth care project of the MDP Foundation. The MDP Foundation is our nonprofit uh, arm of my group globally, but we have a ta tax exempt 501c3 nonprofit uh, organization in the United States and it's called the MDP Foundation. Its uh, slogan is Serving Humanity and the World. And we have satellite nonprofits in India and other countries that will help propagate these teachings, including our whole Earth Care project. Now, our assumptions, because it has not been proven yet by most scientists, so I would say postulates and I would say principles that we regard it as important in this lecture and the whole Earth Care project is that the Earth is a, a divine being with incarnations. That is our first assumption, which esoterically is not an assumption anymore because uh, one of my specializations is esoteric psychology and esoteric science. I regard myself as esoteric or spiritual scientist because I studied extensively world philosophies, world cultures, world religions, and under different masters I have studied esoteric uh, components of the planet, and I have written the book uh, that makes me an expert on this, is Acquiring Invocation. It deals with uh, around 300 million years of uh, world history, including how humanity evolved from its inception, the uh, human animals, and so forth. And it talks also the evolution of religions, the evolution of species, the evolution of uh, humanity from different root races and sub-races. So th this book is one of the references where the whole Earth Care project was conceived. So this is accessible through our Amazon Kindle. You can, you can get it from Kindle as an e-book from Amazon. Acquiring Invocation by Master Delpe. Now another... Uh, postulate or rule and principle that we always embark in this project is that the earth is a living organism and being that has a coexisting and codependent and co-interdependent uh, life with other solar system organisms like planets and even invisible planets that are discarnated and incarnating so it's a very sophisticated a uh, little more complex idea than just typical science that evolves from the so-called Earth as a physical planet. Also, uh, one of the things we advocate is the Earth has a divine purpose. It's not just a planet that will extinct eventually by, by its just physical uh, laws. It has esoteric laws, it has divine laws, 
it has spiritual laws, and it is run by a divine purpose. So there are beings that are the custodians of divine purpose and that harness the divine will of the planet. And we have also the divine plan, running the planet like an operational management scheme. And there are beings called the spiritual hierarchy, the inner government, who runs the divine plan of the planet Earth and its constitution. Now, we have also a divine design of the planet that is not revealed normally in all the DNA structures and all the chromosomes, but on itself is the source of all those micro DNAs and micro chromosomes. It has its own planetary chromosomes and type of substance that are designed by cosmic uh, periodic, uh, I would say, preferences or uh, divine purpose. I have also a, a, an idea about the divine design of the planet that are embedded in an esoteric constitution, in its invisible form, not only physical form, are also governed by periodic chains and cyclic manifestations. Like we have just finished the Piscean era, <clears throat> which is Nostradamus and all the prophecies of the past had told about the end of the world. Rather, it is the end of the world cycle, stopping approximately by 2010 to 2012. And then the, embark, uh, the, the embarked uh, designs that are coming now that are initiating the new era, which is the Aquarian life design, the Aquarian system, which are a, li a little bit more uh, advanced. And uh, also we, we have uh, the component of the Earth that is visible, and we have the invisible planet. We have the physical, which is the terrestrial rocky substance. And we have the invisible gases. We have the liquids on the planet. And then we have the ions and we have the bioplasma. And then we have the aura of the planet that is invisible to most people's naked eye. But some people have etheric vision who can uh, see this through their third eye or through their ESP uh, capabilities or etheric vision. And then we have also the emotional component of the earth, the astral body of the earth, which is made up of feelings and substance of uh, emotions. And we have the mental aspect of the earth that is made up of thought currents. And we have also the spiritual aura of the earth, which is made up of the soul of the earth. And then we have the divine aspects of the earth, the spirit of the earth, which is the being's uh, ultimate aura. So we have many levels of the earth which most people have not seen, which the wise teachers, the avatars of the old philosophers have started to see. And these energetic fields or dimensions are like worlds within worlds, and they are part of the solar system and the cosmic worlds. And so the earth is independently connected to the cosmic substance. It is not a planet isolated from the rest. It is inside the ocean of light of the cosmos or even the universe or even the eternal reality. Now, I'd like also to point out that uh, in terms of kingdoms or sometimes called hierarchies, we have visible hierarchies like the animal or the mineral kingdom. We have the plant kingdom. We have the animal kingdom. We have the uh, human kingdom, which is the incarnate humans and the discarnates. It's not just the p physical born uh, humans. We have also the more advanced human beings called the world service group, which is the mediator between normal human beings and the inner government or the higher hierarchy. So we have also the spiritual hierarchy, which is the... Uh, uh, society or the group of illumined beings and advanced masters and saints. Saints are the lowest membership and to higher levels of initiations or enlightenment of the seventh level, like, like the Christ's level. So we have also the divine hierarchies, which sometimes they call the Shambhala, or it serves as the custodian of the will and purpose of the planet. They are like, if you talk about the hierarchy uh, components of the centers of the body. They are the head centers, 
the brain and the mind and the brain centers and the head chakras of the planet. And we have also the angelic hierarchies, the deva hierarchies or the angelic hierarchies from the normal uh, beings that are elemental lives into the archangel levels, which are even more advanced than the avatars that we know. All right, so we have many, and we have even the so-called, I would say, um, transplanted hierarchies that are maybe visitors from other planetary systems. I'm not saying planets, but planetary systems and energies. And we have, I call, they call, I call it the alien kingdom. It's not the alien with a big head from Mars. It is more of the visitors of uh, the planets from different levels who do not stay on the planet but are guests of different hierarchies for specific purposes, which I will not be allowed to specify at this time because it's a big topic to discuss anyway. Now, there are even more complicated topics which we need to bring out to understand the planet Earth as a living being. That the, uh, uh, I would say the solar system has its own incarnations. And to complete the solar system, we need 10 schemes, 10 schemes of, uh, pl uh, I would say, solar system incarnations from, uh, uh, I would say, the different uh, chains. See, one scheme of the solar system is made up of 10 chains of incarnations. And one chain uh, is made up of seven rounds. And one round I incarnation is made up of uh, seven globes, like the Earth globe, Mercury globe, and Mars globe, and Moon globe. So, so we have many globes, which is called the world. The world today is a dynamic globe. It's not just Earth. That's why I do not call it Earth. Because the Earth, as specified by most of our sciences and education, is the physical Earth that is called the blue marble or the water world or the blue planet by scientists or astronauts. When I say world, it is a dynamic activity of sentient lives that are visible and invisible that makes up a globe. So when you say globe, it is bigger than the Earth. When you say world, it is the activity and operations of the globe and the Earth. So we are now in the fourth globe okay, of the whole seven rounds of the planet incarnation. So the Earth globe is on the fourth now, the densest part, because we have the first globe, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So that is one round of Earth incarnation, which is made up of seven globes. We are now on the fourth globe. Now, to understand this, it requires a lot of dimensional thinking because we are stuck in the idea that the Earth is the planet that we see physically, but without the dynamic incarnations and discarnations of the planet. Now, our human being today is in the fifth root race and fifth sub-race. See, we have uh, seven root races from the almost invisible root race, hyperborean, to the more ectoplasmic borean root race, and then we have the, uh, the uh, Lemurian root race that are more the, the earlier uh, root race before Atlantean root race. Now we have the fifth root race, which is sometimes called the Aryan race, which is not of Hitler's Aryan, but it's a word Aryan, or just call it fifth root race. And uh, for within the fifth root race, we are now on the fifth, sub-race. We have to finish seven sub-races to make one root race. So there's seven sub-races to make one root race. So our fifth root race will be finished when every sub-race, one to seven, will finish. We are now on the fifth uh, sub-race of the Aryan, or fifth root race. The Atlantean root race is the fourth. The Lemurian is the, the third. Borean and hyperborean are the earlier ones. We need to go into the more abstract and intuitive race, six root race, and then finish with what we call judgment day after the seven root race, when the seven root race is the perfection of this Aryan uh, fifth root race. Now, uh, 
we have also the sub races made up of seven branch races, and sometimes you see the yellow race, the brown race, the black, and so forth. So it's a little bit bigger than what the scientists have been talking about, and uh, it, it is a big topic. So if you want to learn deeper and not get confused, we have many drawings that depict all these topics in my book. And just for, for your information, if you even get the ebook from Kindle, Amazon, you can see many pictures that deals with many uh, components of the globes, rounds, and the root traces of the Earth, where Germans was uh, initiated, what, what is the source of Hindu uh, uh, sub race, the Mongols and Chinese, and so forth. So it's a very complicated topic, so it's good to see the pictures and illustrations to understand them. Now, in terms of uh, our project, whole Earth Care project, we need to understand that in collaboration, there is such thing as collaborating as an individual from our own individual level of service or development. And then we have also as a family. We need to collaborate as a family to the planet Earth. We have also the karmic group collaboration where we have the initial group where you belong, like uh, in your own local country, local cities, or your local tradition and local, uh, I would say, industry and so forth. So that is your karmic group. And then as you evolve, you will have your dharmic group where you mix with other people around the world who are into the same line of service and you start to serve with the duty to humanity, the duty to kingdoms, and the duty to the world at large. So you, I call it the dharmic group because that is your duty as incarnated uh, disciple or a spiritual being. Then as you evolve, you go to the world service group, which is the more advanced humanity, who are almost saints and saints who are administering the plan of the higher beings or the inner government and uh, executing towards the different kingdoms, including towards the serving of humanity, the animals, the plants, and the physical planet. And then as a saint, you will have a saints group in the inner government that will administer certain projects at the level of a third initiate or a saint uh, level. And then we have the masses group, which are fourth initiates at the level of uh, the Buddha when he was instituting Buddhism and Lord Jesus when he died on the cross during a uh, crucifixion. Those are the levels of fourth initiate masters. Sometimes they call them arhats or mahatmas or people who have achieved uh, a master's level. And then we have what we call the ultra masters group, more enlightened masters that are of sixth level, and they are collaborating with either the planet service, or they can choose to get out of the planet to learn from other solar systems or planets that are more advanced, or they can be sent as ambassadors of service from the planet Earth to other planets. So this is a very esoteric topic. So I hope you're not being shocked with much of this information because I cannot explain you the real uh, service of whole Earth Care Project without understanding that there's a life of the planet that is not what we see, that not what most governments will see and not what intelligent scientists would see. There are hidden secrets of the planet that we don't normally know that only the masters and enlightened beings would know because they have punctured the veils of illusion and veils of matter that goes to the inner realm and heavenly truths. So they were intuited truth and passed on into their own disciples and learned through word of mouth or today I have written this book so that it will be in mass available to a lot of people globally, even through a download through Amazon. So you don't have to go to a cave to study or you don't have to go to a temple to study these things. You can study at the comfort of your homes and libraries, and even reading through your Kindle things that you cannot learn from the ancient archives because they are hidden and they are called occult truths. And we have also the collaborations of avatars level or world saviors like the Christ, the Buddha, all the big guys who came to establish new principles 
that are relevant to the lessons of humanity during that epoch and period. And of course, we have the deities and the gods of the planet that are the ensouling beings that informs, ins inform the planetary purpose from the Shambhala or even higher. So as we can see, it's a complicated uh, work to be able to analyze the Earth as a living organism called the world Earth and the globe Earth, not just the planet Earth. When we say planet, it's very more the terrestrial or gas planets. In here, it's an inter, inter uh, I would say, penetrating consciousness that makes the planet. It's the world within worlds that we talk about that has many occupants, discarnates, incarnates, living beings that don't have the bodies anymore, and many other facets of wisdom and higher intelligences. Now, what can we do to collaborate then? See, to understand the divine purpose in the planetary divine plan is complicated and very com sophisticated. So you need a sophisticated consciousness and a complex intelligence to be able to decipher and discern these complications and sophistications. So you need to increase your abstract mind to think of not only non-concrete things, non-concrete sequential thinking, which is more what we learn from education and the left brain thinking. We need to incorporate our abstract mind to, to allow the creative imagination to foster the ideas that are taught through intuitive measures, to in, through intuitive channels. It is only through intuition that we understand more of these higher truths because they are revealed at those levels, not at the concrete level. Now, what I did is I had many teachings from my teachers who are masters and enlightened beings. And from their intuitive level of teachings, I d discriminated and deciphered them, encoded them, decoded them into a translated version of concrete thinking. That's why I was able to write the book and draw them. Otherwise, they are too abstruse and abstract, like thinking of the schemes of the solar system, the incarnations of planets to become chains, and the chains incarnating into globes, and globes incarnating into worlds and planets, and uh, kingdoms, and viruses, and all these things. It's very complicated. So even scientists would take a lot of time to catch up in this deciphering and decoding method. Because if you use only the logical mind, it's not easy to fathom and decipher abstract concepts. So the next step of scientists, for example, is to go for quantum mechanics, quantum physics, quantum thermodynamics. A lot of this quantum is still low because they're still expanding only this, this micro nano component of their thinking, but still logical in nature. We need to change how we look at the principles so that we will invite this new truth to come in because if you are looking if this is the truth and the principle and you're looking at the concrete level you will not touch them properly they are only a mirror effect of those principles so we are only interpreting them through a technology and through statistics and through concrete methods which cannot be done if it is abstruse you can just mirror the data you can just translate the information. You can just go as much as interpretations because the data is abstruse, abstract, and intuitive substance. So the next step of humanity, the next step of education, the next step of scientists, and even proponents of new theories of the universe, how it's founded, has to go to the abstract thinking patterns to understand the abstruse nature of the Earth. It's not really concrete. That's why we have discovered the concrete soil, the gas, the chemical aspects, and so forth, because they are the most concrete matter aspect of the earth. But to understand the soul of the earth, the spirit of the earth, you need to go to that level of intuitional awareness and psychic awareness and ultra-psychic looks, looking and, and, and seeing so that you can look at the high levels of frequency of the earth, which is uh, not only the solid, gas, and liquids, and ions. It has 49 sub-levels of frequencies. It has 49 sub-levels of dimensions until the absolute Earth. So it is a must 
uh, study phenomena and it is called the living being earth which is a world which is a globe which is an incarnation of the planet it's not just one planet it will be incarnated again and discarnated and incarnated again now uh, what can we do as individuals what can we do as a group what can we do as world service well first there's an individual effort your external effort and your internal work so as an external effort if you were a doctor or a scientist you have to be the best of your line and expand your your consciousness above the line of knowledge of your peers so there's an external intelligence and knowledge you will accumulate and you apply them first now as you apply them there will be certain rele irrelevance of those knowledge and you start to look for n next truths to you for example there are many uh, diseases that are not responding to medication or medical intervention so any doctor who have tried even antibiotics and combining them will not always eliminate many things like common colds so there must be a question why are common colds and other things not easy to eradicate by normal medicine antibiotics except suppress the symptoms so as a doctor or scientist if you have time to fathom and think you will start to ask questions there must be some undiscovered things yet and for those who are astronomers who have not seen the esoteric literature on the genesis of the earth and the cosmos they will still go through string theory parallel universes the big bang theory of darwin which are obsolete now and then more theories will come from theorists and so-called uh, theoretical science so it will always be theory rather than uh, knowingness so you need to equip your consciousness with more intuitive awareness so that we can see the unknowns by the tools to see the unknowns not the tools of the knowns so I would as an individual advocate that you enlighten yourself as an individual further so that you have more tools of life to decipher higher truths and search for higher truths by your own individual experiences by your reading of uh, more advanced books by talking to more advanced human beings by talking to advanced scientists who are now searching for more quantum effects including quantum entanglement theories and so forth which is karma and uh, interdependence of substance now we have also a duty as a world citizen or even as a local citizen whatever programs that are good for your local countries and cities you need to collaborate and support it through your donations through your blessing them wishing them well to succeed and maybe working against blockages of those projects so you need to raise your bar to be able to collaborate rather than waiting for others to collaborate and not you so you need to be more active and proactive and not just reactive in your participation of service and corporate social responsibility using your money your talents your time and your influence so those who are rich you need to raise your bar to become either a social entrepreneur or to establish a more efficient corporate social responsibility and community service using your talents time and money and your social capital now as a global citizen you need to study the world you need to study the earth you need to study the the mysteries of the earth so you can understand the earth in a bigger scale and a broader terms Saint Augustine uh, Saint Augustine has said one day that life is like a book if you have traveled in one country you have only uh, seen and read one page so if you have budgets travel to your different cities different cultures different countries to study different religions different culture and philosophies and it's worth because they are not usually taught easily in books or in classrooms you have to experience the Japanese culture as compared to the Je German culture you need to, to uh, experience the Indian culture the Latin culture the Greek culture and you need to visit um, China for that matter and and eat their food immerse yourself in their cultural uh, life and, and look at how 
to understand the Chinese culture, and then also for people who want to learn the American culture and your own you know, choice of uh, countries to learn. So you need to expand your consciousness so that you become eventually a more enlightened global citizen that does not just favor one religion or one culture or one philosophy or one nationality, but you have to be proud of the world at large. You have to be proud of the diversity that humanity brings through different ethnic groups, uh, sub-races and root races. And you need to bring also your studies to different religions so that you understand why religions were designed to have differences. Instead of asking what is the best religion, you will stop asking what's the best religion. Instead you ask why do we have many religions? So that would explain why it's necessary to belong to different religions because different culture, different lessons, different upbringing needs different training. In the earlier days there were no universities and schools so religion was the school, was where law of the land, law of life were taught, law of spirituality through those times that uh, we don't have universities and educators. So a few masters would, and philosophers will be your teacher under the trees or in temples or in ashrams. Now as, a, as an enlightened uh, member of a group, you have to make sure that you participate in the group efforts of service. For example, even the Rotary Club group or the Lions Club or the Young Presidents Organization membership uh, people are member of Chamber of Commerce, all networking groups, or Society of Engineers, Society of Nurses. You just don't get a membership by paying membership fees. You need to enrich those membership and those groups with your own new ideas. The expanded ideas that you can bring in will probably improve their tactical plan and strategies to be able to serve their members, maybe institution even uh, stress and fatigue management meditation or exercises to help and benefit the members st instead of just talking engineering if you were an engineer or medical things if you were a doctor. So you need to enrich people around you as much as you can in the group formation or associations levels. Now another thing is to uh, use what we call the uh, Ahimsa technique of Mahatma Gandhi. It's not just non-violence strategies. It's non-collaboration with things that are bad, things that are negative, like wrong food, wrong practices, uh, vices. Any companies that are selling vices and advocating poisons and toxicity in, in our food and our substance um, that we take in. We need to not collaborate with them. Uh, you have to selectively buy better goods from companies that are eco-friendly and advocate win-win win outcomes of the earth and humanity. So, so by, sub, by, I would say, by moving away from those organizations, they have less and less clients to make profit that will be invested in another vice uh, production company. Uh, also, you can get a group formation to discuss and brainstorm about these uh, collaborations and non-collaborations. Not as a rebel, but a rebel with a cause using spiritual techniques of blessings, for example. Meditation and blessings of uh, pro-evolution projects. Uh, different uh, special projects that support uh, the environment. And many other good projects that will uh, improve human lives and human uh, lifestyle. So you need to choose your groups of service and, and service groups so that you can collaborate at the maximum level using your facets and ferrets you have expanded in your life including your donations and uh, good, good uh, energy and uh, social capital. Full moon meditation. Full moon meditation is uh, for more advanced human beings. It is not about the witches and sorcerers and those uh, weird people who meditate during full moon. Let me explain to you full moon. During full moon, it's the closest uh, distance between the earth and the sun. It's not about the moon. The moon's reflection is from the sun, and that's we see it from the earth. And so the highest energy of the month is during full moon. And during full moon, you can tap through the energetic transference and transmissions of 
solar systems energy, planetary energy, and also constellations energy that dominates that period of the full moon. So like we have the Easter full moon, which is dominated by Aries constellation. So the Aries constellation has a substance and a quality of virtue, which is good health. We have dynamism and enthusiasm and uh, excitement and inspiration. We have also transformation and renewal and many good things that you can derive from the Aries full moon quality beam from the Aries constellation via the solar system to the earth and to the constitution inside the earth, which is all the kingdoms, including humanity and you, your families, your homes, your countries. So when you channel the full moon uh, substance, <clears throat> it is not only the highest energy of the month from the solar system, it is also the, the highest embodiment of a quality from certain constellations that stimulate, stimulate that full moon month. So there are full moons, like Aries full moon is a very important for Easter, for transformation. We have also uh, the full moon of Taurus, and sometimes this is called the Enlightenment full moon, where wisdom and power and enlightenment dawns upon the earth and humanity through certain divine intermediaries like the Buddha and the Christ. And we have also the Gemini full moon, which is the full moon of humanity, sometimes called the Christ full moon, because it brings the energy of goodwill, the will to good and right human relations to the earth and to kingdoms, including humanity. So if you can tap by group formations through full moon meditations and bring that energy and be an agent of transmission, of these good qualities and bless your family first bless your incoming month bless your projects bless your employees your co-workers bless humanity and all the kingdoms bless the earth by visualizing the earth as a target of your blessings it's like praying or channeling then you can bring that substance to as many species and billions of uh, humanity in just a few minutes so you become a pump an agent, a transmitter. So it's not a really a, a, a difficult thing. I will give you some pointers, an introduction to that technique of full moon blessings or earth blessings or your city blessings later on before we finish today. So blessing during full moon or any day can also be beneficial to your families, to your friends. You can be a transmitter of healing energies. So you have to learn some healing techniques where you can pump energy, spiritual energy, divine energy, healing energy, and revitalizing energy to your families, loved ones, to yourself and others. So you will do a bigger job than just praying for benefits. You transmit. And you also collaborate with groups who are of the same uh, level of you and uh, level than, uh, of your level and initiations or development and you can collaborate with them to spread a lot of good teachings or be the ambassador of goodwill and right human relationships so we have a lot of uh, insights in fact in my books including this book of acquiring invocation we have many techniques you can use to collaborate to also acquire a new design that is of the new life that's coming the new era the acquiring life period which is dawning upon us starting 2012 2013 2014 and the old Piscean life which is marred by wars conflicts uh, fanaticism inquisition jihads and uh, and crusades including from individual conflicts to country conflicts and wars is passing away and so we need a new form of substance, a new design of consciousness, a new way of thinking, a new way of feeling, a new way of looking at things so we can collaborate with the earth in its next course of development. Because the earth is also a being undertaking initiations, schooling, education, and enlightenment. It is a student of the solar system. It is a member of the solar system. They say that it is not a sacred planet yet, but eventually it will become a sacred planet and a major player in the solar system. As of, as of these days, a lot of beings had been talking about the transition 
And so we need to be the bridge of this transition when we are alive today and not lose the chance to be useful to the transition and bridging of consciousness from Piscean to Aquarian life, from old epoch to the new era, a new age. Now, we also need to help educate and stimulate a lot of people, starting for with our families, our friends, our co-workers, with new concepts. So instead of teaching them, you can even buy them a booked book and uh, CD, DVD that uh, will guide them to learn new things. Like, um, we have CDs and DVDs that will help you meditate and uh, align before you transmit energy. I will teach you later on some techniques to do that. Now, for those who are really healers and uh, trainers of energy science and energy medicine, you can teach as many people on Earth and human beings to be able to learn the science of energy management, to heal themselves first and remove and reduce their toxicity so that when they transmit energy, they will be purer and more aligned to be an agent of light, love, and power to be transmitted to kingdoms, including humanity. Now, we can also help our own territories and jurisdictions to help re-educate humanity or unlearn, I would say, not only re-educate but unlearn from the old design, uh, designs of teachings. So if you are a school teacher, if you are a parent, if you are a trainer, there's a lot of avenues where you can use yourself to be an agent of transmitting new information. And those who are uh, able to help in the redesign of curricula, of schools, eventually, of uh, many associations that have training programs in corporations, in your own uh, schools, primary to high school, to college and postgraduate education, we can influence them by talking even to our relatives or PhDs or master's degrees in education or people who influence curriculum design. We have also new ways of selling these ideas by uh, accessing our website. We have a lot of free lectures, free uh, talks and presentations about many new concepts. And uh, so you can you can just show them the downloads and upload them for them to look at. So we have many, many uh, works to do together. Now, it is dangerous for a human being to change everything or change nothing. So we need to bridge those change instead of changing everything or nothing. So we would be on the moderate side. Now, for people who are more educated in esoteric science and manifestation, you can create thoughts and visualizations that you can create thought forms or imagery to send it to lobbyists, to lobby for a good cause, not just for commercial reasons, to senators, to congressmen, to lawmakers, to people who are deciding the new ordinances of countries and new rules. We need to send them new waves of thoughts, and new patterns of uh, thinking, a new current of thoughts so that they will receive the new substance that is new, the new way of thinking for the modern times, not the old uh, carryovers of the Piscean substance. So there's a Pisces that has gone, and there's an Aquarian that is coming, and there's a bridging between the two. We are now in the bridging point. So. The more advanced human beings and saints and masters, they have crossed over those transitions already, most of them. And so they are either now in the inner world without a body, they have discarnated or they have gone through different uh, transformation themselves in the inner world. And there are now beings that are incarnating soon as masters and saints who will be the primary uh, teachers of many of our new sciences, new advocates of new laws and new economic systems and new ecosystem uh, protection. But for the time being, we need to bridge those so that we have more advanced parents to be able to incarnate or channel new babies that are more advanced souls, new children that are more master souls. So that's another uh, work that we can collaborate. There are quality parenting for advanced children and advanced souls that I have designed to teach parents who want to bring advanced masters and souls to be able to prepare themselves energetically and their system should be redesigned with 
new frontier energy medicine techniques. Now, we can also uh, help train the business people, the politicians, the thought leaders to install more conscience in entrepreneurship and business and economics and to install wisdom in politics and in leadership. So we need to bring two major things, or three major things. The, the concept of right human relationships instead of world peace. Right human relationships and goodwill, which will displace ill will and greed and uh, all this uh, uh, bad decision-making uh, gestures of humanity. We need to, to bring the energy of wisdom to guide leadership and politicians and govern, governments. We need to help install the conscience in business and entrepreneurship so that they will not misuse the resources of the world. They do not just go for profitability and sustainability of profits, but they will go for the win-win-win. So you win, I win, and the earth wins. So we need to, we need to help even the, the postgraduate education uh, defend theses that are more forward thinking rather than recycling ideas from old ideas. We need to open up our, our funds, our philanthropic uh, funds, not only to support known existing statistical data research and, and the uh, invention of new condoms and new medicine, new Im vaccines. We need to entertain the new energy medicine which will augment the allopathic medicine. So that by combining energy medicine with spiritual psychology, which focus not only on the phys physical body, but the invisible energy field, and we will augment the best of medicine, allopathic medicine, and the best of other complementary medicine. We will have the new medicine of the future that deals with physical health and non-physical health, and the soul's health as well, and divine health. So we need to to bring a lot of uh, changes in our education and even our religious groups to make religion as a practical spirituality rather than uh, a more fanatical dogma approach, but to open up our hearts and our minds to see the commonalities of religion. So instead of fighting who is the best religion and who's going to be saved, we will talk about how can we save everyone and not fight and not kill for the sake of God or for the sake of Christ or for the sake of uh, of our faith or, or our own philosophy, but how can we extrapolate and interpolate our teachings so that it can see the grounds of commonalities? Because all religions have commonalities. That's the law of karma is common, and many other laws, the law of love, the law of forgiveness, and many laws. So instead of just teaching faith, we will teach maybe principles that will turn into value system, not just virtues, but externalize as practical spiritual virtues to be practiced every day rather than believed as a good uh, teaching. We need to uh, uh, improve the stress management of humanity, the fatigue management, so that we will not damage our bodies before we look for our health uh, and look up our health. We need to prevent diseases than just correct them. So uh, medicine, professors of allopathic medicine, psychology, they need to expand their teachings to be able to talk about not only corrections measures by medicine and nutrition or sanitation, but they need to include spiritual solutions for, spiritual, for physical diseases or spiritual solutions for material problems, spiritual solutions for financial problems. So there's a lot of things that will augment a lot of our existing educational solutions and strategies by the spiritual sciences and esoteric sciences that we have already available. Our BLAF University, I have designed distant learning program that can broadcast many of our teachings without having to go to a physical school, but then attend retreats that will go to study different cultures, philosophies, and religions in different countries like China, Japan, Middle East, Egypt, India, uh, Greece, and even many places like Mexico and Peru and Latin America, so that people will enrich their experience of looking at humanity, not only through their own nationalities and their own neighborhood, 
but to see it in a general form of one being, one humanity, one global citizenship. Now, another thing that uh, we need to uh, think here is to set aside time in every month, every week, to donate to a good cause. Money to donate every month so that it's not just a good karma that you generate. You will generate invisible prosperity that when you need the money, it will also come because by law of cause and effect, when you show mercy to others who need help, you shall receive mercy and help as well when you need it most. Also, when you help make people earn money instead of rubbing them out and cheating and, and stealing, you will give the avenues for people to make money. Now, I'd like to mention also uh, a few of uh, good sayings about life is a moving target. We change, our countries change, our government change, philosophies change also. Even religion will change because we are a moving target. The earth is always moving towards its own evolution. Humanity is not stagnated. We have evolved so much already. So our evolution needs new teachings, new paradigms, new game changers, new world changers uh, projects, new global uh, teachings, new world saving. So life, the earth, us, our families, our professions, the human being are all moving targets. So you can use the state saying, saying, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So we need to identify and list things that we cannot change yet because we don't have the resources and we don't have all things that we need. You have to accept it for the time being and not worry and be scared and be stressed about it. But things that you have analyzed that can be changed for the good of the group and yourself. You change it. You have the good courage and passion to change that by all means. Do not delay. And also the wisdom to decipher and make better decisions and to know what to change and what not to change in your life. Another thing that I like most is what uh, uh, Winston Churchill said. We make a living by what we get and we make a life but by what we give. So you make a living by earning as much as you can, but be a philanthropist, be caring for the needs of the world. Do not just sit there and watch people do the work and give money for the work. Just be active and you will feel good. Sometimes the return of investment through donation makes you happier than the interest of your bank look at paperwork and actual sheets or your bank account statements. You feel good that your money has increased around 3 or 4% as an interest rate. But then the, the feeling of good, happy, joyful nourishment of your heart when you give donations and when you help others is immediately received by you as a return of investments of service. That's why saints and world servers are addicted to service. Where can you serve, you feel joy and feel bliss and that cannot be paid by money uh, as your bank account will give you those increased interest rates or in increased uh, money from interests from the bank. Now, another thing that uh, I'd like to spell is we have to put things into action. As Benjamin Franklin said, well done is better than well said. So instead of just talking about how we care the earth, how we can clean the earth, we start in our homes. We prevent from spending more recycles to go use, useless. We have to save more water, electricity, and energy that are wasted. We save more money for a good cause rather than spending it in a luxurious uh, uh, activity and does not give you the return of investment through spiritual equity. We need to build our spiritual and soul equity by doing good things so that we expand our energy and our consciousness to be able to have more intuition to download new things that are better for the future. So we do not just copy what people say and what they are doing from the past. We can be an embodiment of new thoughts and new paradigm shifts so that we can carry our own gospels and our own sermons and our own strategies so that we will become a pioneer 
or we can inspire our children to be pioneers in thought leadership and uh, philanthropic uh, leadership so that we do not just follow the steps of the old civilization that has kept money and have greed and selfishness as their tools to enjoy life, which is not sustainable. Now, from uh, a point of uh, experience today, I'd like to teach you a few things that you can do almost every day to be able to align yourself and collaborate as an individual or in a group formation to blessing the earth, to bringing thought currents to other people, to make them better aligned to the earth's intelligence so that we have the whole earth cared in a different way than just cleaning the physical earth and just fighting against pollution. But we also fight mental pollutions which makes people criminals, bad thoughts and aggregate uh, will pollute the mental earth and so it makes people think negatively. As they say, we think around 60 thoughts a day either deliberately or unconsciously. So how much of that 60,000 thoughts a day are positive in normal hum human beings and, what are, and how many are negative? Most probably there are more negative thoughts that come out easily than positive thoughts in a lot of human beings. So that pollutes the earth. So by blessing the earth with certain techniques that we will teach through energy management and energy medicine and esoteric science, you can deliver more positive radiation and vibrations to the earth, to your country beings, to your cities, to your homes, and to your families, and to those who need your help as a healing and transformational tool. Secondly, is the emotions of human beings are also collected and deposited through the emotional aura, like fear, anger, resentments, anxiety, loneliness, sadness, and so forth. So these negative emotions also clog and contaminate the emotional earth. There's also the earth's emotional aura where, we, where our emotions are collected and immersed. So we need to clean our emotions and bless the emotions of others so that it purifies the, earth, the earth's emotional aura, which makes it cleaner for people who died to not be disturbed by the emotions of people who are still alive. Because there's an, a, a living earth which is not physical and they call it the astral world which contains purgatory hell and the first heaven and we have the mental world which is the second heaven and and then even higher heavens up to seven heavens which is the absolute earth or part of the earth that is absolute dimensions now in terms of uh, meditating cleaning our own self of stress depression, anxiety, burnout, and the side effects of wear and tear of life, that will help us also clean the energy before we channel. Because if you bless without cleaning yourself, you tend to transfer some of your dirty stress energy and anger, for example, or stress to other people. And that's not service anymore, but desecration or disservice. So I will teach you a few techniques before we end today. Uh, our topic today is not to cover everything about whole earth care project of the MD found, MDP Foundation. It is to give you a glimpse, an insight about what we can do together so that we can make the earth an easier place to live for others to enjoy and our generations to enjoy rather than to suffer as an inherited karma of the sins of humanity and the misfortunes of being an heir to the mistakes of the past. So we need to correct as early as possible so that future children and the ge next generations will inherit the byproducts of our efforts today. And that alone is worth living for today. And that is worth discussing today in the Earth Day uh, celebration. So I'd like to teach our new uh, members who came today some techniques that you can use every day. First, we will go for the technique of synchronized breathing method how to externalize negative energies, thoughts, emotions, and align your emotions, your mind, and your spiritual energy so that you can channel the positive energy without contaminations to other people. And then we go to the technique of uh, goodwill, how to align and be harmonious in our lives towards our soul and other people so that we can always maintain integrity in our energy. Our emotions and mind are always purer and cleaner. And then how to 
externalize em negative emotions so that it does not stay with us as poison of our consciousness so we can evolve and be enlightened not only as a citizen of our country but as an initiate or a master of the future or a saint or a saintly person who can help more people all right and then at the end we bless using our hands if you see all the masters and saints one common thing from all religions is they always bless and touching the heart like you see the statue of Jesus touching the fingers here and blessing Buddha also used this Blessed Virgin Mary used that some of the deities of uh, China, the Kuan Yin Ma, they use she, uh, he, she, because he's an androgynous saint, a master, he uses this. Egyptian, they use that technique. All our ancient wise forefathers, they use these hands to bless, even through sacraments and religious rituals. And even gurus, they bless to their palms or through feathers of peacocks or through other instruments. So let's do it first with the synchronized breathing method. Please follow me. Inhale to the nose. Exhale to the mouth. Inhale to the nose. Exhale to the mouth. Continue. One more. We can do 10 to 15 of that repetitions. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth rapidly. Except if you have neck injuries or severe migraine, do not do this. Okay? Now next step is to concentrate on your heart center to evolve your love and your emotional intelligence. Your mid-brow to evolve and activate your mind's intelligence and spiritual intelligence and spiritual power to the top of the head where the descent of Divine light comes in. All right, just close your eyes. Concentrate on the center of the chest, mid-brow, top of the head, simultaneously. And breathe slowly, relax, align. Again, inhale and exhale. Head straight, concentrate on the center of your chest, mid-brow, top of the head. Close your eyes, concentrate simultaneously on the three points, and breathe slowly and deeply. Relax. Again. Head straight. Concentrate in the center of your chest. Mid-brow, top of the head. Simultaneously, breathe slowly, 
relax, align. Now this will align you and achieve that inner peace and stillness and have peace of mind daily. Now I want you to heal yourself. Visualize you're in front of a beautiful ocean. Externalize and flush out all your stress, anxieties and worries out by breathing them out to this imaginary ocean as you exhale. Allow the ocean to absorb all of these negativity. Now, exhale all stress, fatigue, anxieties and worries out. Let the ocean absorb them. Exhale all anger, frustrations, pent up emotions. If you have rage or hatred, exhale them out. This is pollutant to you, to your future, and to other people, and to the earth. Exhale them out. Frustrations, irritability, intolerance, destructive criticism habits, anger, pent up emotions, hatred and rage, if you have any. Exhale, all of them. Exhale all your fears, your constant worries, insecurities, and even your phobias in life. Release them out to this imaginary ocean. Let the ocean absorb everything that you exhale. Release all your sadness, loneliness, grief, depression, or any feeling of weakness, or apathy, or meaninglessness, or uselessness, despair. Release them all to the ocean. Exhale all confusions of your mind, doubts, uncertainties of your life. Exhale them all out to the ocean and let the ocean absorb them as you exhale. Release all diseases, toxicity, including addictions, compulsions, inhibitions, vices, substance abuse, toxicities. Release them out to the ocean as you exhale.
release all traumas of your life, including emotional traumas, including painful experiences, negative experiences in life, their side effects and memories. Release them out, including our struggles in life and sufferings and memories of the past. Exhale all to the ocean. Exhale all unresolved issues in your life, problems, conflicts, crises. Release them all. You release everything that you do not like about your life or yourself, including guilt, arrogance, you have pride, conceitedness, all the sins of humanity, including greed, self-centeredness, self-importance, egotistical nature, all our obsolescence, crystallizations, and dogmatic habits. Release them out. Let the ocean abstract or extract all of them. We it to be gone forever, not to come back. All of these negativity, be gone forever, not to come back. Disconnect from all this negativity as if you have a sword Cutting your connection to those negative energies now with a will, willpower. So it is. Now awaken your heart center, your love nature. Feel the center of your chest, the love of, of the heart, peace, joy, by recollecting happy events. Reminish, re experience happy moments of your life, successful moments. And feel them in your heart again. Your heart center in your chest. The center of love. The center of conscience. Absorb, assimilate all the love, pleasantness in your heart as I heal you and bless you. Share these energies of pleasantness and nice, pleasant feeling on your heart center to other people, especially people who had helped you in your life. There are a few people who had helped you in your life. Express gratitude, respect, and love from the heart center to them as if this were your last time to do so. As I bless you, you bless others and talk to them from the heart. And bless also from your heart all your loved ones, families, friends, co-workers, 
as if you are radiating love, happiness, joy from the heart, like light coming out, radiating to your families and loved ones, friends, co-workers. Imagine these are small people in front, micro sizes, and they're receiving from your heart like the sun radiating to planets. But these planets are your relatives, friends, beloved ones, co-workers. They're receiving the love of your heart, expressing it as good wishes and intentions. Wish them success, happiness, harmony, spirituality, and good health. This is a great service. When you bless people with your heart, they will receive love, harmony, and peace to bring substance to their energy systems to experience them and to become better people. This is transformational technique, a healing technique. Include your parents, your loved ones, your children, siblings, if you have any. Now, include also blessing people who had been hurt by you and ask for apology. As you bless them from the heart, imagine them as small people. Bless them from the heart, love, joy, harmony, peace, good wishes. As if your heart is radiating light of love, happiness, joy, hope. To all these people, reduce them to a micro size. And ask for apology and forgiveness from people who have been hurt by you and bless them. So it is. May these blessings allow you to be forgiven. Now visualize also people who had been hurting your life or had hurt your life had hurt you or still hurting you. Visualize them as small people in front and radiate your heart energy and bless all these people with love, harmony and peace, reconciliation. And then bless them with forgiveness, even mechanically at first until you do it unconditionally. Let all of them be forgiven. Let all be free, including yourself. As you forgive others, you shall be forgiven of your mistakes and your sins in life. Let all be free. Let all be forgiven. Let all be forgiven. Let all be forgiven. Let all be free. So it is. And stop the energy. <clears throat> now I want you to start and end your day by a technique of goodwill. Think of all people who will you, you meet for the day, either through business, associations, or through family. I want you to salute them with your heart, wish them well for the day, you can start and end your day with this technique. This is called the meditation of goodwill. Wish people great things. W wish people positive results, wonderful events with your heart. What you wish others, the positive boomerang come back to you, comes back to you eventually. Wish people a good life, successful life, financial, sustainable, successful in terms of spiritual life, service, life, growth. Keep on blessing and wishing people well, good health. And as you wish them, smile at them from the heart 
as if you are saluting them with love, respect and gratitude. If they're clients, customers, your co-workers, your families or friends, you salute them every day, especially people whom you will meet, to harmonize yourself before you meet them. Even business meetings, or social networking. I want you to salute also your enemies so that you will learn the lessons of forgiveness through salutation. Salute them with your heart and wish them well and wish them positive changes. So it is. And wish yourself a great successful day by visualizing great end games and results and outcomes for the day. And if you have problems, solutions for your problems, including financial results, service to others, an accident-free day. So visualize your end of the day to be very positive with wonderful outcomes. And will it manifest a strong intention that this will happen? So it is. So it is. Last technique. You concentrate on the center of your chest, mid-brow on top of the head. Raise your hands to project energy, to bless. This time I want you to imagine your country as a small map. And inside your country are your cities and your home. Or your business. You can include your business, your office, your home, your cities, and your country. Imagine your country as a small map with all the cities inside, with your own local area and homes inside. As just points of light. Now, while focusing on the heart, mid-brow, and top of the head centers of light, you will project to your hands the energy of love, harmony, and peace, transformation, and healing. That is your intention when you channel love, harmony, and peace, transformation, and healing, and upgrading of consciousness. Upgrading of consciousness. Keep on focusing on the heart, mid-brow, and top of the head as you breathe while radiating blessings to your hands. But visualize your country as a small, small scale, smaller than your palm. And bless now. Continue concentrating and blessing simultaneously. Observe, assimilate, purify, revitalize, transform, and heal your countries, your cities, and your homes and local areas. So it is. Now I want you to imagine a small globe, the planet Earth, that is not only physical, but it has energy fields. It has auras and a soul and spirit. It has an energy intelligence controlling physical Earth. It's a world and it's a globe, not only a planet. Imagine all continents inside, countries inside, religions, humanity. That 6.075 billion human beings with so many billions of discarnates in the inner world that are not physical anymore. And so many beings that are not seen. So many species from the mineral, plants, animals, humanity, and the more advanced humanity, and even elemental lives the angelic kingdom. Let's bless and channel only positive energy. Heart, mid-brown, top of the head.
Let the earth be blessed with love, harmony, and peace, transformation and healing, upgrading of substance, invoking divine beings, the angelic healing beings, divine protectors, the special hierarchy and the inner government to bless through us or directly the earth and all its constitution and constituents, visible and invisible, sentient lives and non-sentient lives, and all the hierarchies of the planet, globe, world, earth. And we project this to the future so that the new energy will uh, sanctify and energize and bless the earth from now onwards. Channeling the divine beings, we invoke for the new divine purpose, a new divine plan, a new divine design of the planet for its next step and collaborate with it. So it is. So it is, so it is. We salute the divine soul and spirit of the earth to guide the physical earth and all its different hierarchies with a new divine purpose, new divine plan, new divine design. With healing and transformational energies. So it is. So it is. Now it is done. Bring down your hands. Open your eyes. So I hope you had a wonderful session of uh, purifying your consciousness first, your energy field, aligning your emotional intelligence, mental and spiritual intelligence to be able to render yourself aligned and balanced and clean energy so that when you start to bless, you will be more refined to deliver the substance that are from divine beings and holy beings and so channel properly and rightly so we do not contaminate and desecrate the earth it becomes a disservice if we are negative and contaminated and we bless. We need to be pure, more aligned and balanced before we bless the earth and our countries and cities and our homes and other people. So after the synchronized breathing, 10 times to 15 times, even three sets, in between you concentrate on the heart center, mid-brow and top of the head to align you, energetically speaking and consciousness-wise. And after that, you exhale to the ocean. Imagine the ocean in front and release all this negativity from thoughts, emotions, energy, so that you are rendered clear and clean before you start blessing the earth. And then you do the meditation uh, of goodwill, alignment, alignment and wishing people well, blessing them well, and then wishing yourself well also and forgiving yourself by forgiving others and being forgiven. That will purify your consciousness so that when you bless the earth and others, you will be a pure agent and transmitter. And at the end, you visualize your countries and your cities, small, you concentrate from the heart, mid-brow on top of the head, like a radiating sign, you bless. And then you concentrate again on the heart center, mid-brow on top of the head, and you visualize the earth as a globe, with energetic components and invisible components and you just bless. That way you channel the new purpose, the new plan and the new design of the planet Earth from the higher beings who are using you as a transmitter and an agent of transformation. All right, all of this can be seen free from our websites. So you can visit us at www mdpfglobal.org you can visit us and upload this and or watch this video and you can even visit this meditation alone every day if you wish or frequently and it will be uh, given to you uh, to guide you every day or every week or every month secondly is our products will also equip you with tools to heal through our energy medicine be well science lines our CDs and DVDs have all this guiding, guiding you. The meditation we just did and other techniques are here. It's just 19 minutes to meditate and free yourself from all negativity. 
and the exercise and yogic techniques and breathing science and centering meditation is also here so we have I have at least six books and this book wants to be shown again Acquiring Invocation authored by Master Delpe bringing uh, bringer of the diamond age so I welcome you all to participate in our mission we have many missions to fight even loneliness laziness poverty consciousness but we need to take care of our own individual needs as part of the earth our families our countries so the whole earth care project is a must-have in every country in every city and even every family has to know the earth is a living organism a living being that needs collaboration instead of saving we can save the earth by collaborating rather than doing it alone we need to have many groups around the world to be the centers of light power and love as transmitters all right good luck to everyone and happy earth day and i hope you continue this earth day since 1970 by those proponents who have uh, who had wanted to achieve a rare political alignment and support from before democrats and republicans rich and poor city people and farmers tycoons and labor leaders and let them align to the earth's purpose and contribute so that was the initial impetus that was given by the earth day in 1970 april 22 1970 today april 22 2013 we embark the whole earth care project and this is our project let's collaborate let's align and let's prepare the earth for our future generations while enjoying what we have become already good luck to all of you and hopefully we vi you visit also my website masterdelpe.com masterdelpe.com to give us other tools books and other uh, workshops that you can align yourself to collaborate with our nonprofit work again salutation to all of you love and blessings Thank you. Thank you, everyone. The 30, uh, uh, it's, if you say 5, nonillion is 5 times 10 to the 30. So that's a lot. And uh, the types of bacteria are around 10 to uh, I would say one billion kinds and in terms of viruses uh, there are several millions of viruses and only 5,000 are species are kinds are still studied so uh, if I explain the earth that there's so much uh, con constitution of the earth that I'd like to uh, you know to touch upon but uh, Today our topic is not focused on just the earth itself. I would like to talk about the earth as an organism that is composed of many hierarchies. By the way, do you know that the earth has uh, what we call a shape that is uh, geoid, geoid, G-E-O-I-D. Geoid is what they describe the earth's shape, which is uh, an ellipsoid. It's almost an oblong whose uh, circumference is around uh, at the equator around uh, I think 24,901 miles or 40,075 uh, kilometers uh, circumference and from pole to pole is a little shorter which is around 24,859 uh, miles or around 40,000 uh, kilometers approximately and the diameter of the earth has a nominal size of uh, 8,000 miles or around 13,000 kilometers the diameter and the largest the largest uh, I would say deviation is caused by the Mount Everest because it's the highest peak which is around 29,000 uh, 29,000 feet approximately or 18,850 kilometers or miles and uh, the Mariana Trench is the deepest part of the ocean, which is around 35,747 um, kilometer a uh, feet, I would say feet, which is uh, around 10,911 kilometers. So that is like the deepest part of the ocean and the tallest mountain on Earth. But if you look at the biggest protrusion 
like the bulge is in the equator with the Mount Chimborazo of Ecuador and the Mount uh, Huascaran of Peru because of course the equator is the biggest part of the oblong or the ellipsoid and so those uh, volcanoes in Ecuador and Peru are the, the biggest uh, protrusional bulge. Anyway, we don't have to take, uh, talk about all of these uh, things uh, because these are data you can find from Wikipedia or from uh, WHO to 1 billion uh, in 2011 survey. Well, whereas the United States have uh, 313 point uh, around 88 or 882 million Americans, uh, 313, 882 million Americans survey of 2012. And the uh, fourth largest population on Earth today is Indonesia with uh, 237.64 um, million people, 237.64 million uh, Indonesians in that survey of 2010. And the rest of the world uh, ranks of, uh, from number five is Brazil, we have Pakistan, we have uh, Nigeria, Africa, we have Russia, we have Bangladesh, and Japan as the top ten populated uh, countries. Whereas in terms of uh, languages, let's talk about also human languages. We have uh, the most uh, Mandarin speaking uh, human beings with around 845 a million people, uh, Mandarin-speaking humans. And we have also Spanish-speaking, 329 million Spanish-speaking people. So Spanish and Latin uh, American. And we have also English-speaking, which is uh, 328 million. 328 million. And also uh, Hindu-Urdu, about 240 million uh, Hindu-Urdu-speaking uh, people. And the rest are Arabic, which is around 206 million. And the rest are Bengali and uh, Portuguese. We have Russian, Japanese, and uh, Punjabi of Indian origin. Those are the top 10 languages. Whereas uh, today, uh, we, we can say that uh, in terms of uh, kingdoms, we have many species and kingdoms. We have the animal kingdom is 7.7 million species as of... Uh, the survey in 2011. And we have uh, uh, fungi, 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 fungus. We have 0.3 million. I, say, I think it's uh, 0.61 million, by the way. So those of the fungus family, 0.61 million. And plants are 0.3 million only. Uh, species, protozoa, for example, is 0.04 million. And uh, chromistas, chromista is 0 0.03 million. These are the algae group. Well, bacteria alone is about what they call five nonillion. You know what's nonillion? It's uh, 10 to the 30, 10 to the and so forth. Now, some business proposals uh, would focus on uh, avoiding uh, carbon pollution by using uh, high-efficiency cars and machines that uses uh, carbon fuel. Also to reduce wastes and make things efficient. And also to uh, have a cleaner energy production. And of course, to uh, preserve our rainforests and uh, our trees so that we have a breathing mechanism by which more oxygen saturation in the air can be achieved. But is this global warming really a, a problem or is it a symptom where the Earth is changing? Now, before we can talk more about the whole Earth Care project, I'd like to focus even in summarizing what is really the Earth and who is the Earth. So, uh, I would like to say that the Earth is one of uh, the uh, planets that we call uh, terrestrial planets in the solar system. It's the biggest terrestrial planet, which is made up of rock formation. We have also Venus, we have Mars and Mercury, who are terrestrial planets, whereas Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, and the other planets are gas planets. 
And we have also two dwarf planets. Well, they just demoted Pluto. So Pluto is now considered a dwarf planet, so with Ceres. So there are many other things that are coming out through science, but today, as far as we are concerned, uh, the Earth is, uh, I would say, a planet that is sometimes called the blue marble by astronauts. Or we call, them, we call the Earth also water world because the Earth is composed of two-thirds uh, made of ocean, two-thirds covered by ocean. And uh, let's talk also about the Earth and its activity. The Earth also rotates around the Sun at around, uh, I think, 1,532 feet per second, or I would say 100 or 1,000 miles per hour at the equator. And the planet revolves around the sun around 18 miles per second, or we call it 365.24 days a year, or 365, 366 days a year. And uh, the Earth rotates on its axis, not exactly 24 hours a day, but uh, 20, 23 hours and 56 uh, minutes. I think through the tsunami effects, uh, it has tilted, it has changed the uh, axis tilt so it's probably even shorter. Now, I'd like to talk also about the Earth as a living activity uh, that Hello everyone, I'm Master Del Pei. Welcome to our Earth Day celebration. Usually, April 22 every year is a commemoration of the first Earth Day, April 22, 1970 which has been inaugurated by the insight of uh, its founder, uh, Gaylord Nelson, a senator of Wisconsin. And this uh, new age thinking, and uh, I would say a new environmental movement uh, path has been initiated as part of the hippie movement and sentiments against war and environmental pollution. So today we will celebrate Earth Day through my lecture which includes a lot of the exoteric component of the Earth. We will talk a little bit about what really the Earth is and what the Earth is made of. And also the esoteric Earth, which is the planet Earth as a living organism. So the title of my talk today is Collaborating with and Healing the Earth as a Living Organism or a Living Being. Today, more than ever, a lot of people are now shouting uh, against uh, you know, greenhouse effects that cause increased temperature from 2 degrees to 11 degrees uh, by 2100, as predicted. And also, a lot of people are concerned about soil pollution with chemicals and pathogens passed to human beings through food and water, and therefore causing a lot of malnutrition and toxicity. We have also 1.2 billion people who lack clean water, causing 5 million deaths a year, especially children. And we have also an average of 2 million people who die every year due to air pollution and sickness due to uh, toxicity. Today, people are concerned about the atmosphere filled with uh, carbon. And it has the highest carbon uh, measurement in the last 800 years, 800,000 years. And of course, global warming most likely would affect the rise in sea levels, the expansion of deserts, the species extinctions. We have also a threat to food and security and loss of habitats. That's why we have uh, many solutions saving our rainforest. And what our executives today are proposing are to reduce uh, and reuse recycles and also uh, to save many things that we use usually and throw out, especially in the United States, but put them into a recycling bin and separate things that are organic and not organic or plastics and bottles that coexist with other uh, planets. So l let's talk also about the Earth made up of human beings and uh, speaking different languages and uh, practicing different religions. So as of today, we have, uh, I think, 7.075 billion human beings that are 
registered uh, born and alive. And, and so that is like the survey that is of 2000, I think 2010 or 11. Uh, I don't recall exactly the date, but uh, we are almost 7.075 billion human beings. And uh, I will probably talk this later on, but we have almost 100, I would say 106 billion human beings born since 5000 BC. So we, we can uh, summarize that later on, but what I'm concerned today is to explain that the, the Earth uh, has a life force that is invisible. The Earth is not just this physical rock formation, but it is made of an invisible Earth. So our collaboration with intelligence and the divine plan of the Earth needs a little bit explanation so that we will not focus on what the scientists say about the Earth, but also on its uh, energetic content, its consciousness, and other living organisms that are not even visible. All right, so let, let's talk about uh, what we call the different religions on Earth. Religions on Earth, we have 2.2 uh, billion approximately Christian, Christians and maybe around, uh, uh, there are more Muslims than Catholic Christians though, but for the whole Christian uh, community around the world is 2.2 billion uh, Christians. And Islam is 1.65 billion. And we have also the no religion, so-called atheists, or they belong to paganism and other things, uh, 1.1 billion. We have also Hinduism as uh, 1 billion approximately. And we have Buddhism, which is around 500,000, uh, 500 million. And the rest are Chinese uh, folklore, uh, folk, uh, folk religions and uh, Shintoism. And we have also Sikhism, Judaism, and also Jainism. Those are like the top 10 religions. And also we have uh, the population that are the top 10 on earth today is China has around 1.347 billion people as of uh, the survey of 2011. And we have India, which is populated with 1.2 to 